Amanda <laughs> is showing me our three-year-old and oh, the faces dude. he makes when he eats. He was just eating with his mouth closed, like his brow was just like <laughs> furrowed a little bit and like going, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Bob also does this thing where he takes a double bite <laughs> where it's like a taco or a sandwich is a great example where, and I've asked you about this. I'm like, why do you take two bites? It's like he goes, chomp, chomp, like one, two. And you're like, well, Does anyone else do that there was as a well. tomato hanging off. And I'm like, no, there wasn't. Like, what about that time? What about that time? What about, I like, it's every time with like tacos or sandwiches. Yeah. I don't know why you do that. I don't that. know why I do it either, but I definitely do it. So I'm, is anyone else listening? <laughs> do you take double bites? Double bites. And it's every not, once in a while, it'll be a triple bite. And <laughs> so I think what it is, oh is a gosh. sandwich where I take a bite and I got these two corners sitting there. There's a big corner, and it's like, no. I want to round that corner I off. would think that if no, it's not that. you didn't do it every single bite you took. Yeah, all right, whatever. I don't really know. <laughs> I have a problem, y'all. It's called a double bite problem. Double bite. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so let's move on. We're talking about today um, the top seven actions that Americans took uh, last year to build wealth. Mm -hmm. And I found this from MSNBC. They did this study of 5,000 Americans and asked them a whole bunch of different financial questions. And one of them was, what did you do in 2022 right. to build wealth? In 2022? Yeah. Uh, yeah, There's there had to be a lot of people coming out of COVID and the uncertainty of that. I would imagine that there's a lot of people yeah. actively trying to, well, not to make mention, more money. Well, not to mention, like the inc uh, insane uh, inflation that right. we've had over 2022. Gas prices, As grocery. well as um, Gosh. interest rates. Mm -hmm. Like have gone oh, way right. up. Yeah. Uh, so I was kind of surprised by the answers given that. Um, but anyway, we're just going to go down these mm -hmm. as a top seven list uh, of what Americans are doing <laughs> or did last year to build wealth. Um, so number seven do you want to read it? Yeah, it's switch careers for a more lucrative job. Yeah. Right. So they're just trying to make more money. And I think that's a really that's good a move. Uh, right. You know, I. it, it is interesting because I remember being in a job and feeling like the best I could do is a 5% increase and then getting in a different field and like seeing what a 50 or 100% increase looks like over a one or two period, which is just insane right. if you've been in a big corporate environment mm -hmm. where, you know, because that's what it was for me. I right. was in this big, huge corporate machine. Machine. And uh, and that was it. Like, that was the best you could really hope for. Yeah. Um, and then God got me out of that environment into a different environment. Mm -hmm. And suddenly things can move much quicker. Right. And uh, anyway, and that's just a really... If you're one of those people who's been in a situation like that, maybe 20, 30 years, and it's like, that's all you've ever known, and that's all you think is possible, um, I'm just going to encourage you to think beyond that because, yeah. A, it's possible, mm -hmm. and then, B, um, again, as a believer, this is part of your unfair advantage that right. God is able to do so much more mm -hmm. than you think um, and what your, your worldview might be limited to. Yeah, and it so. might require something different of you. You know, I, I all but guarantee it will. You know, like, <laughs> but that's like the growth. Like that's yeah. that's what we're searching for, right? That's what I'm searching for is just growing in my walk with God. But I think one of the ways that that happens is by doing stuff that's really difficult and walking through hard things, and especially obeying God and obeying following God for Him sure. when He leads to something. It yeah. seems like no, that's never going to work. Not work. It's never going to turn into anything. Man, that's pretty much our whole story, right? Yeah, I mean that. That'll never work. Why would we do that? That's the story of so many things that God has done over right. and over. I mean, I mean, Moses. You think about Moses going to talk to the Israel. Or to I don't want to say it's a requirement, but man, it really seems like it. Yeah, he goes to talk to Pharaoh, and he's like, "They'll never listen to me," and they didn't for a long time. I mean, it was ten plagues before he actually paid attention. Yeah. It, plus, he was stuttering, right? Yeah. And he thought, I, "They're not going to listen to me. I can't even speak." But man, did they listen? They didn't listen to him. They listened to the Lord, right? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. All right. Number anyway, six. Number six. Start your own business. Start your own business. Which, coincidentally, was the 
career switch that I made. Right. So, I mean, there's some overlap there, but that was, you know, kind of that whole thing. Uh, you know, and again, back to that previous point, though, I remember being in that position and feeling like just my, I was, I, I don't know, it's like, you know, when they put those things on the side of the horses and it's like, you can't, all you can see Blinders. is this little, yeah. this little straight, straight thing. Um, you just can't see what's actually there and how big it is and what the opportunity is and all those different things. So, yeah. So again, I just want to encourage you if you're listening um, and that's you in that situation that there is more there. There is right. more opportunity. There is more that God can do, even if all you have seen for your entire life is one thing. That doesn't mean that that is how it has to be. That's so, right. Um, so anyway, and in terms of starting a business, uh, I'm a big fan of starting a business. Um, it's definitely not easy. Uh, I think we live in a world where there's too many people just pretending like it's so easy to be an entrepreneur. It's so easy to all these different things. Yeah. And, there, and there's a trade-off there. There's a lot mm -hmm. of sacrifice that's required. Yeah. Um, well, and I remember talking to someone when you had first started the blog, and she's like, oh, your husband's a full-time blogger. Like, tell me, how do I do it? And I was like, well, it's a lot of work. And she goes, oh, I don't want to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> she knew herself well enough to know that it wasn't for her, which I think is great. When you're, when she's like, I just want this. She wanted it to be a hobby. She didn't need the income. She just thought it would be nice. Yeah. But, it, I mean, it is. It's one of those things where it's like, you got to be ready and willing to put in the work. Yeah. I and mean, that's any business. Solve a lot you know. of problems. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, I know that this is how God has wired me. And um, and I feel like I couldn't do anything else. I just feel like this is. You'll never what, work for the man again. What I'm on. You are um, the man. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm on the earth to do. And. Yeah. Uh, and I gained a whole lot by working as an employee, and mm -hmm. I'm really thankful for all those years to do that. Um, but well, yeah, and yeah. everybody has a different calling because if we didn't have people supporting us, yeah, it, the, our, this business would not work. Yeah. So, so yeah, not everybody, of course, is supposed to be a business owner, but, right? Um, but at the same time, if you do feel like that's how you're wired and what God's called you to do, mm -hmm. like run after it, chase it. Yep. All right, all right. number five. Number five. One, two. This is number three. No, oh, yeah, number you're number five because we're going backwards. <laughs> Invest in bonds or CDs. All right. This is... How do you feel about this one? 12% of the people who um, uh, were surveyed answered this. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think right. it you know, completely depends on your goals and what you're trying to do. CDs are you know, starting to pay better as interest rates are going up. Uh, and the bonds, especially if they're I-bonds, like we bought some I-bonds last year because... The heck is an I-bond? Um, they're um, inflation-adjusted bonds, and so is I, does the I stand for inflation or uh, the I like iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> they just ripped it off. They're apples. Apple. Apples I bonds. <laughs> um, Doesn't it sound like it should be that though? Sure, sure. <laughs> Got my iPhone and my I bonds. Uh, anyway, I don't know what it stands for. I, I, I'm. It might be inflation something, but point is that they're bonds that are paying really well because inflation's high right now. The government-backed bonds. bonds that are paying really well. Um, so ours, I think, I don't know if they're still paying this, but they're paying 9.62%, uh, uh -huh. which is crazy, from a government-backed bond. So, yeah, it's not All a bad right. idea. All right. Number so four. Number four, invest in real estate. Yes, I love that. I love that idea, we that's smart. We were wishing to invest in real estate in um, Seaside, Florida this year. <laughs> Last year, well, I We were mean. talking about that a little bit. But Maybe this year. Maybe I we think, can do it this year. Depending on what happens with the real estate market, I think it's going to be maybe a year or two. I mean, it might be a better time. I'm sure it'll be a better time. Yeah. That, that's, this last year was pretty Pretty crazy. crazy. All right. Number three. Negotiate a higher salary in your primary job. Yes. Yes. This is good. So give us some negotiation skills. Um, How about let's let's so, role play. I'll be the boss <laughs> and you come and ask me for a raise. This is going to be good. <laughs> All right. So I... He just grabbed my hand. I don't think you would do that in a real... Well, it depends on what this boss-employee relationship is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hi, Miss Linda. So I have... Man... I've been faithfully serving seed time for 15 years now. Mm -hmm. 
and I've added a whole lot of value to the bottom line. And in fact, um, by me doing this and this and this, uh, we increased our revenue by about this much last year. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think about a 10% raise? Wow, 10%? You really think you're worth that much? Well, I do, because I've increased <laughs> revenue by this much. By how much? I'm just kidding. This was more Whatever. fun than anything else. All right, am I taking it too seriously? <laughs> Um, no, but I mean that that uh, all understanding and negotiating skills probably would be a helpful thing to talk about at some point. So, yeah, I wouldn't know how to do that, and I wouldn't have enough confidence in myself, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think the the important thing to understand about negotiating is, and this might have been I don't know if this is in Trump's book. Like I feel like I've seen it in a couple different negotiating. Yeah, we books. listen to everything Trump says. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great oh my idea. Gosh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Donald is a good negotiator. He's a great negotiator. He wrote the book on it, man. You can't say anything negative in that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, where was I? What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. So this this one thing that I've taken, like, this is like the one most important thing to understand about negotiating. Whoever needs it the least has the upper hand. Has the mm. upper hand in the negotiation. The one who can walk away because they just don't need the other person, they don't need the thing. They are the ones oh that have the upper hand. So the point is to get yourself in that position to where you can walk away and have the upper hand. Yeah, and this is something we really talk about in True Financial Freedom and probably the book too, right? About how to become indispensable. Yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Okay, That's coming great. soon. So anyway, the point in all like, of that. Like today or in another podcast? I don't know. Oh, we'll okay. see. All right. We'll come back to it. Okay. But the point in this whole thing is if you're an employee, you put yourself in that situation when you have whatever, a headhunter who uh, is pitching you to three other companies or you have mm, other offers. Right. Like that's when you really are in a position uh, of negotiating power. Right. So like when you go to the car dealer, you're like, I found these other cars. They're the same thing, same price or better price, same car. You can yeah. either sell me this car or not. Yeah, no, that's the thing. It's and I'm like, out of here. Well, yeah, and in some ways, like we've done that. Um, we're getting in the weeds here, but with some uh, cars we've negotiated for, it's like I've not even gone there. It's like I'm not even going to waste my time dealing with them there where I do this over email. It's yeah. like, I got this at this I'm price. Sure if that's you how can we're give buying me, our next car. If you can give me this car at this price deal, otherwise, you know, our I last, got this other thing. Our last you know? car, car buying experience was the biggest nightmare of my life. <laughs> I'd rather give birth again and do that. Oh, uh, all right. We'll okay. save that one for another episode. <laughs> but the takeaway, the takeaway is to be in a position where, yeah, you have the upper hand. That's the best mm -hmm. thing for the negotiation. Okay. Um, and the other piece of that that I would add, too, is, and, and again, like me now seeing the other side of this, being a business owner for the last 15 years, having been an employee, like I just see it through a very different lens. And I think the most important thing you can add to this conversation is thinking in terms of what is going to make your boss successful and what your boss wants. Right. And how can you prove to them in this conversation uh, that you are doing those things or that you have added that value, that you've brought those things, mm -hmm. and subtly imply, if I were not here, you would not have this. Um, like that subtly. Yeah. I mean, you don't you don't want to like go and threatening, you know, but the point is, <laughs> you know, be like Dwight Schrute, um, come up with your little uh, 10 page little document <laughs> and show them this is a value that I've added. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, this is what I'm asking, mm -hmm. you know, and the other thing you can do, you can look at opendoor.com. Uh, I think it's opendoor.com. I think it's what it is. And so or open. Is it open door? No, it's open. I need to find out what this URL is. Um, and can we put it in the show notes? Yeah, I'll put it in the show notes because I'm having our turn. Remember, it's glass door. Maybe it's glass door. Remember, forget the name of the door. <laughs> Something with that. <laughs> anyway, it's a site where you can go see the average salary for your position, oh, whatever the thing that you're super doing, helpful. and so you can compare and see. It's like, oh wow. So the average salary for this position is here. I'm actually making whatever ten thousand dollars less. Um, that's pretty compelling. You hand right. that to your, your boss and say, hey, here's the average. This is what I'm being paid. Um, I've been doing this for five years. I've done this well. Like, Because the secret that I will tell you is that your boss does not want to go through the hiring process and hire someone else. Like, oh. Unless you are just not a good worker, I promise wow. you, they do not want to go through the hiring process. Like, This is like 
nails on a chalkboard is like the last thing that I want to do is go through all the work, all the time and energy of hiring someone again. Um, and so mm -hmm. they do not want to do that. And so if you are a good employee, they do not want to lose you. Yeah, that's a really okay? good point. Um, and so again, that's just more for you to understand about your actual leverage and what you have to offer. Um, and we'll just leave it at that. All right. So that's kind of my spiel for that. All right, so let's go to number two. Get a second job or start a side hustle. Mm. This is actually what you did also uh, while you I were didn't... working at AG Edwards. Yep. And you started the blog on the but side. But this is a this is absolutely a great way to build wealth. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if you can't do a side hustle, I think you know kicking butt at your current job and trying to get in a position where you can negotiate yeah. a raise and get a promotion and whatever all that stuff like that's great. Um, but if you have the time to pick up some extra hours mm -hmm. and then turn that into money that you can invest, like that is a great way to yeah build some wealth. And especially if it's a hobby, like that's what's so cool about right now is that. It's a jobby. There's never, there's never been a better time to turn a hobby into a jobby. Uh, a <laughs> turn a hobby into extra income that you can invest. Because I was thinking about this, like um, we're thinking about one of our sabbaticals coming up, a big one, and uh, how I want to like be creating some more music during that time because mm -hmm. it's like it's something I just haven't done in so long uh, and really enjoy doing. And I was thinking through it, and I'm like, I am doing this because I love it. I'm doing it to serve people, but mm -hmm. I can. We can also make money from it. And so, like, there why not take the hobby and earn money from what we're doing as well? Yeah, I like that. So, anyway, that's the gist of that. All right. So, number one. Number one on we, the list. Do we need a drum roll thing? I mean, I don't thing? really think we do. Well, <laughs> no, but I think it's. I think it's really. They're interesting. waiting with bated breath. Are they? Are they? Are you really? <laughs> Okay, so, number one is invest in the stock market. So this is the number one thing that people did in 2022 to build wealth. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually think this is really good because the stock market in general was down for a lot of 2022. Mm -hmm. And I think this is such a good sign that people were investing while the market was down because this is when you want to be investing. Right. Because, because I mean, I've run into people and I was this person where it's like stock market go down. It's like, oh, I'm never investing in the stock market because mm -hmm. it's going down. Yeah. It's like, that's the best time. It's like, right. you go to the grocery store and bread is on sale. It's like, that's when you buy more of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You <laughs> throw freezer. it in your freezer, you know, and you buy more when right. it's cheap rather than buying it when it's really expensive, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so many people make that mistake of just wanting to invest. Or buying a home when they're cheaper, when this, the yeah. market's down for, yeah. the, for the housing market. Yeah. And so I get this. And I remember like my the first investment I made, it was, um, do you remember this? That Ameren stock. No, keep going. So it was a local utility company near where we lived. Um, and it, it was my first uh, investment, real investment that I ever made. Mm -hmm. um, and I bought a mutual fund right around there, were too. We but I think it was right before we got married, oh, if I remember okay. right. Um, and I remember, yeah, just being, like, really excited but also nervous because um, I was buying the stock. And then even that first mutual fund we bought, too, like, also just being, like, nervous. But I don't know, like, <laughs> this combination of I hope this works. Like, everybody, uh -huh. all my mentors, like, all the books I've read, everybody told me that this is going to work uh -huh. and that – you know, but they also told me that it's going to go up and down. And so, mm. like, it might be lower in six months. Yeah. And so I was kind of scared. And it's like, I don't want to lose that money. But at the same time, like, I was so thrilled because it was the first time in my life where I wasn't trading, you know, hours for dollars. Mm -hmm. And the money that I had was now working yeah. for me and Love earning that. more money. And it was my first, like, taste of passive income, you know, because, like, with the uh, Ameren stock, I remember it was $500. And it's like, that was a lot of money. You know, yeah. but I remember putting it in there. Well, the yeah. other thing is back then, like you, it was really difficult to make investments. Oh, yeah. It was a lot more complicated. Except for if you went through a. Um, yeah. You had to go through some financial services financial firm services or something. Firm. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think because there was so little education about it, like most people didn't know how to do that by themselves or yeah. they thought I'm going to screw this up because I don't have the right person to help me. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like self-diagnosing your, you know, a sickness that you have or something. You're like, well, this could go one of two ways. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, or one of a bunch of different ways, I guess. But I mean, 
that's what's so wonderful is it's a lot easier now, right? Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. It, uh, yeah, I mean, we're DIY investors. That's what I've always done. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what um, that's why we have our 10x investing course. It's like to yeah. help you get started investing, you know, or right. anyone else. And like I, I broke it down in that course for me just to, to make it yeah <laughs> simple enough for anyone to understand. Like we yeah. go down to what buttons to press right. in the course. Like so, it's just as simple as possible to get started, and it's all based off of timeless investing wisdom. It's like, so I've been doing some crypto investing, but I'm like so cautious about that and how I talk about it because there's so much money to lose and it's such, right. it's so much the wild, wild west. And um, yeah, so it's just a very, very different thing. But investing in S&P 500 over the long term mm -hmm. is just such a proven path to grow your money and to build wealth that, um, like I'm just completely sold on it, and we've seen yeah. the results of that. You know, we've seen hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. um, as a result of our investments over the years now, and uh, yeah, and it's like, and all of this comes back to stewardship, as far as I'm concerned, and like right. the kingdom focus of this is why we're doing this. Yeah, it's not just so that we can have a ten million dollar retirement or whatever else. Uh, you know, and I don't care about people saving for retirement. Like that's fine if you want to do that, but point is, is that I want to use my skills as an investor um, to be able to earn money, yeah. to be able to fund and finance kingdom activities, right? and to be able to give more and to make more of an impact. So um, so I view this as good stewardship. You yeah. Know? And when you automatically have it taken out of your paycheck, it makes it a lot easier. Like you don't really miss the money. Oh, yeah. Which I, yeah. I never understood that concept until I actually did it. I thought, well, I can't afford that. <laughs> yeah. But... But then you never you, missed it. But I never missed it. And now yeah. I'm like sitting pretty <laughs> yeah. on this, you know, nice little nest egg. I mean, it's it's kind of unbelievable, honestly, because I would have never had the the foresight to like do all that, except yeah. that someone told me in my first job, you have to do this. Trust us, you're going to be happy <laughs> in the long run. And so I did it, but kind of with a little bit like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work, you know, with the same yeah. nervousness yeah. that you were talking about. Yeah. But it was such a great idea. And we've can, obviously, when I married you, yeah. I didn't have a choice then either. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, if you're you didn't interested. You're my joke. I am laughing at your joke. You didn't hear it. <laughs> Guys, sometimes I make jokes and he doesn't laugh, and it's I'm just sitting there so, laughing by myself. Okay. Hopefully sometimes they're I laughing laugh. with me. Sometimes I laugh quietly. <laughs> so quiet you can't even see a smile on no, his face. I, no, I'm sorry. I thought it's that was a true. Joke. Sometimes he'll look at me and I'll say, Why didn't you laugh at that? And he'll just nod his head and smile and go, I am laughing on the <laughs> inside. I'm like, see? I'm That's laughing not at your what now. I want from you. I want an audible I'm laughing laugh. at your joke now. All right, so, thank you. Are you good, huh? Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> if you Moving want right to get started investing, need our help, want to go through a 10x investing course, um, yeah, it is the simplest investing course that we've ever been through. It's mm -hmm. also like I worked really hard to eliminate, like it is not everything you need to know about investing. We intentionally like removed all of that to just put in there the actual meat and potatoes of what you need to know and take everything else out. So it's an investing course you can go through quickly. You know, that's our, the thing that's with all of our like courses. I try to make it so you can go through really quickly and no extra fluff. But um, but anyway, so yeah, super simple. This and would be they're a great also, gift too for like graduates and stuff. Yeah, I completely up. agree. Um, the other thing I'll add to it though is that it's, it's a passive investing strategy. This isn't stuff where you got to look at charts all day long or do anything mm -hmm. like that. This is like, 100% passive investing, long-term investing. Mm. This isn't get rich quick in three months, right. um, but this is long-term, um, solid, consistent, passive approach. So I look at our investments one time per year. That's how passive this is. And mm -hmm. then once a year, I spend about an hour or two kind of looking at them. Uh, and that's that's it. It's so that's passive my for me. I never look at them. <laughs> approach. It's even more passive for Linda because she just <laughs> marries me once and that's it. But... <laughs> All I had anyway. to do was make a good decision once. <laughs> anyway. I love you, Bob. So, love you too, sweetie. <laughs> anyway, so that is the uh, number one thing that uh, Americans did in 2022 to build their wealth. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's a good thing. That's what I'm going to be doing this year to continue to build our wealth. Yep. And, um, yeah, I think you should probably consider doing it as well. 
But that is our that's, show for that's today. That's it for today. And uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave Lots of review. laughs with Linda. <laughs>, laughs with Linda. And we'll see you in the next one. We really love creating fresh content for you each week, but if you have not checked out our book, Simple Money, Rich Life, this really is our best work, and we have some free resources we want to tell you about. So if you enjoy listening to our soothing voices, then you can download chapter one of the audiobook. And if you prefer to read, we have the first two chapters of the ebook version. Or we even have a five-week book study outline based on this book. Mm -hmm. You can download all of this for free at seedtime.com slash sample. <laughs>